When you think of the word splash art, these are the things that you really think about. And when you look up the word splash art in Google, the first or the majority of things that pop up are the art from League of Legends. So first of all, why is a splash art important? It really captures the attention of uh, the player and people and draws them into the game. It gives the imp first impression of the character and really helps pe get people excited and interested in the character. So that's why really uh, League of Legends, for example, spends a lot of time on their splash art because it really gives them the benefit that they want. It also gives a story and gets you immersed into the world of this character or champion and having the character in an environment or a scene tells a story that resonates with people and connects the player with the character and gets you even more excited to play. So what makes League of Legends splash art so good and why is the word splash art so heavily associated with League of Legends? I will try and analyze a few splash arts from League of Legends in different sections and talk about the different reasons why these work and how we can implement these things and try and study them in practice so that we can get better at our art and try and learn from these amazing artists. So one way to look at these paintings is to try and uh, turn them into grayscale and really look at them and see how they work. And you'll notice that the use of light and shadow is done in a very specific way and the contrast between the dark and the light is done in a very specific way to guide your eye towards a specific part. So for example, we can see here that the values here, the light, you can see here, it's very bright in this section and the hammer to kind of drive your attention to that. But then everything else like here and here and around it is darker. So we can see this in some of the paintings. So for example, we can see it again here. The character is darker than the background. So it kind of provides a silhouette for everything else. And then the background is very light. And then this piece here which is the character's power is even lighter than everything else. So there's that contrast between the character, which is darker, and then this part here. So it really drives your attention towards this and then the character itself. And then we see it again more. So here, the background, everything is dark. And then the attention is right in the center here, the hands, where it's much lighter than everything else. And then my favorite one, this one here again, you can see that part of the face is in light and as well as this. So for the character Evelyn, you can see that the attention is really here while everything else is really, really much darker. So even in just grayscale, you can see how they play with the values and the light and shadow to bring in that storytelling and really drive your attention to what, what you need to see. And in order to study this, a really good exercise is to do thumbnail studies in grayscale. So as you can see here, uh, you can turn a lot of these paintings into grayscale and zoom out. And the purpose of a thumbnail study is to try and paint the major parts or the major shapes in just grayscale in a very big shape, no details, so that when you're zoomed out, you can really see what you're trying to, to show. And this also doesn't only help you with value studies, it also helps you understand composition a little bit better, it helps you learn how these paintings are done in general. And I think as you can see here, even though there's not too many details and the thumbnail was done in, in five minutes or less, when you're zoomed out, it really gives you the impression that you need and it gives you the story that you need. After values, the next thing that we can see is really color. So we can see, for example, in a painting like this one, the color, the vibrant colors, are here and the yellow part. So you can see that the red and the yellow are really the parts that complements the values that they were put in place. And it really drives your attention again, using the right colors to specific parts of the painting. And we can see that they use this quite a bit. And I don't want to go too much into color theory, but you can see, for example, yellow 
and blue are complementary colors. So they use complementary colors to kind of make sure that your attention is there and make sure that the colors really work. You don't only have to use complementary color harmony to give you a great piece. There are many different ways of doing it. So for example, this one uses an analogous uh, color harmony where a lot of the colors are really close to each other. So we can see that it is really just the blue and the purple that's used here. And it really works. So for this specific piece, you can see that there's no complementary colors. There's no opposite colors. And it really uses a lot of colors that are close to each other and uses the values to really drive the piece to the next level. So this is another one where you can almost see that maybe they use split complementary. So yellow as the main color, you can say. And then you have the purple and then the blue to really use uh, in the color in the color harmony here. So again, it's not just one specific color harmony that they use in all their paintings. You can see by studying these ones and learning about the colors that they use, you'll be able to implement this and learn a lot more about the different colors that you can use in your own paintings. I really like this one because it, the the idea behind this is that everything looks very almost grayscale except for the red parts here and this really helps drives your drive your eye towards these things so th really when we look at these paintings here we can really see that they use different colors and different color harmonies to be able to complement the values in order to bring the colors to or the story of the painting to what it needs to be so the next thing to look at is some of the composition ratios. So the idea here is that there are some ratios that are generally accepted to work and give a really appealing painting and it drives the attention of the eye to specific parts of the painting. So some of the ratios are, for example, the first one, symmetry, and it can be vertical or horizontal. The next one is, is the golden ratio, so that it drives your attention towards the spiral. And then the next one is rule of thirds, where the, where the intersections happen of these lines is where the parts of the interest of the painting are. And then you have diagonal, same thing, you have the line, so a lot of interesting things should be amongst the line and specifically in the areas where the lines intersect. And then finally, triangle. And of course, you can always um, put these in different orientation and it doesn't have to be in this specific orientation. So if we look at the first painting that we have, we can see, for example, that the diagonal ratio really works here. So we can see, for example, that our eye is really driven towards the, exactly the th four spots that there's intersection. You can see that where, where things are happening and the shape language and the body shape, it really follows this thing. So you can see like even the body shape really follows this very, very well. So this is a very good example of um, using a diagonal composition ratio. The next one we can look at is this one. This one uh, was an interesting one because when I was looking at it, there are a few different ways of considering it. So you can look at triangular. So this drives your eye towards the hammer first, and then the arm extends towards this piece here. Another way of looking at it through the golden ratio Similar idea, it drives your eye towards the hammer first and then through the arm and up towards the piece here. So this one you can think of it as triangular also. So you can see that this line drives your eye. But I think the other way of looking at it actually is also golden ratio. So, and you can see the painting is really framed with that. So you can see this part here, which is also darker. It drives your eye and then brings you back here. So a couple of different composition ratios that could work on this one this one is for me is very obvious that you can see the golden ratio very well even the parts of the painting you can see draws your eye through here brings it back and really this part that's drawn really follows the golden ratio very well and then the character also is along that line here. So you can really see how the golden ratio could work with this one. And then finally, I wanted to talk about this one with the idea of symmetry. 
So this piece is symmetrical, but symmetry alone sometimes, if everything is 100% symmetrical, may not be very interesting or exciting. So one of the things that they did here is although the character's pose might be a bit symmetrical, they played with the values. So for example, let's, let's put the value piece on. We can see that this part here is dark and then the opposite side of it is light. Similarly, this part is dark, but then they made this part light. Also, also here, so this part is light, this part is dark. So even though it's symmetrical, the values break that symmetry in a, in a way to make it more interesting and exciting. So the last thing that I want to say that is very important in all of this is the storytelling. So all of this, no matter how good the ratios, no matter how good the colors are, won't be enough if there's no storytelling. So you always need to think when we're doing our drawings, we always need to think about the story side of it and always think about the expressions and the feeling that the painting gives. So we can have a very technically well done piece, but if the story is not there, the painting may not be as, people might not connect with the painting as well. For example, this one here, you have the character Cassiopeia looking down at us and, and you can see that the facial expression and the blood that there is there, it really helps give give the story. You can see here, over here, the way they've captured this piece is also giving a story. We can look at, at this character here, for example. If it was just the character without the background, the story wouldn't be 100% there. So you can see in the background, there is there's some stuff going on also in the background. Even though it's not the focal point, it still drives the story of, of the painting. So always try and remember to give some, some context and some story to your painting. And if it's just technically correct and technically well done, it's not enough to make a great painting. So this was a quick analysis that I've done on some of the splash art from League of Legends. And I'm hoping to do more studies of trying to replicate some of these to learn some of the rendering techniques and learn from them and try and practice more. I hope this video was helpful to you. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.